The Tech Nerdist channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to check us out on Patreon, pop over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-V-O-R-O-U-S. Here, we do our best to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in 3D printing and tech and keep you informed on the latest developments in these sectors. So, if you're interested in getting updates on 3D printing or technology such as programming, robotics, artificial intelligence, and things of that nature, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like on this video, and comment about what you'd like to see in the future because we make these videos for you. And we're off. This is another in our series about the Ender 3 Dual Extrusion Mod that we are building from scratch. And as you can see here, I have another part to place on the printer. This is the mount for the extra NEMA 17 motor that will hold the second extruder. So I need to remove these tree supports here. And there's quite a bit of them because this is a pretty open model. And as per the advice of one of the viewers of the last video, I did download this file directly from the Ender 3 GitHub because it was easier to modify. Um, I've known for a while this printer was open source. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but I appreciate him pointing that out because in the long run, it will save some time. And I've almost got this guy cleaned up. We are going to get the clippers and get the rest of this out, and then we will jump over to the machine and throw it on. All right, first things first, we need to attach the motor to the mount and in order to do that we are basically going to go through these holes here and into the motor and we will tighten those each All right, so there we have that. It's gonna go on like this. So we need to remove this piece, but we also need to reattach the end stop here. Just going to go in here, just like this. So let's get that screwed in real quick. That's the wrong one. Let's see. Here it is. These were the pointy ones. Set it right there. Make sure we're lined up with the hole and start screwing. I want to get the other one, get that in there too. And we don't want to over tighten this and break the little piece of PCB, but we do want to make sure that it is tight enough not to move around when it is knocked into. 
we also want to make sure that our connection is still there. So um, I have a little bit of a problem with overfill on these holes here for my tree supports. So I'm going to pause the video and drill those out with a rotary tool real quick so you don't have to listen to the noise. All right, and now that I've thoroughly made a mess here, you can see pretty well um, that I have the end stop mounted and we are ready to screw the case onto the other motor. Now this case is actually holding the NEMA 17 motor behind the X axis that moves the X belt. So we need to make sure that when we put this back on, we are keeping it taut and where it needs to be. You can see it loosen up there and kind of flop around. Uh, so we need to do See, and I made a easy mistake to make and put the end stop in upside down. So I need to rectify that real quick. And not only can I tell that because it doesn't fit, but now looking at it, you can see underneath here, this little groove is where this piece is supposed to be. So um, it's not going to go on properly right here. Let's go ahead and flip it over. Get it in there where we want it. That looks good. This actually makes more sense because it's a little easier to tighten these screws without all the other stuff in the way. And just to reiterate, I'm going to be reprinting all of these parts. When I do, once I have them where I want them, I will reprint them in a carbon fiber. Um, and then using that, we will go through the whole assembly process step by step and show you everything you need to do. For now, these prototypes are working pretty well. Okay, so you go there. file this down a little bit to get it to fit which is weird because this is the part I got directly from Creelty's github so so kind of funny that it doesn't really fit interesting um, pretty close this bar is in the way so we're gonna have to bring it this way a little bit um, and I think I'm gonna take care of that problem right now here All right, so we finally got it where we want it. As you can see, it does actuate. Sorry about that. Just hit the camera. Uh, this guy needs to go to here. I do have a clip for that to keep that in there. Um, but like I said, yeah, you can see the end stop is working. It was working. Yeah, so we need to install a couple more bolts to hold it in place. But so far, so good. Everything's holding pretty steady. Um, we should be pretty close to good to go here. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. I will see you in the next one when we add the part cooling fans to the main hot end piece. Let's go ahead and 
back up just a little bit. Sorry for the shakiness of the camera and the mess from my rotary tool, but so far this is the beast. This is what it looks like. We have both Bowden tubes attached, both extruders attached. Still need to wire this up, but we can't do that until we get the new board. Um, our only other issue until the board arrives is getting these fans on for the park cooling fans. So I do have an additional one. We are going to do two, one for each nozzle, and that should work pretty well. So uh, stay tuned. I will get that park cooling fan taken care of, and then it's just a waiting game while we wait for that board. And we're going to have to make some firmware adjustments to get everything dialed in where we need it. Then we can start test printing and finalizing parts of the design. So, uh, don't forget to leave a like on this video, guys. Hit that subscribe button. There's plenty more in this series to come. And, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit... 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link, check out our Patreon link, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.